What is an amino acid? Um, it is an organic compound that contains both an amino group and a carboxyl group. And after we read that, we see amino acid. Oh, yeah, of course. An amino group and an acid group. What kind of acids do we have in organic chemistry? Carboxylic acids. So there are many, many different amino acids. Proteins only contain what are called alpha amino acids. Do you remember when we named carboxylic acids? The common method involved using Greek letters to specify where substituents were. And the carboxyl carbon did not have a letter because nothing could be attached there. The first carbon over was the alpha carbon. We talked about alpha hydroxy acids and, and different things like that. So the, in proteins, we only have alpha amino acids. So the amino group is on the alpha carbon. That's what that means. There are, of course, other types of amino acids. You could have a, a long chain, and you can have that amino group on on any carbon and that would be considered an amino acid. But the ones that are found in proteins are only alpha amino acids. Also attached to the alpha carbon is an R group or side chain. And this is what makes the, the different amino acids um, not all the same, is that their side chains are different. So this part, the amino group, the alpha carbon, the carboxyl group, and the hydrogen on that alpha carbon, those are the same for all the amino acids that are found in proteins. And what's different is this R group. There's actually over 700 naturally occurring amino acids. There are only 20 that are present normally in proteins. And we call these standard amino acids. Those are the 20 alpha amino acids that are normally found in proteins. These all have names, common names, and they have a three-letter and a one-letter code. Okay, I handed out a copy of Table 9.1, which we'll see in the slides in a minute, and that shows the names and the structures of all 20 of them, and also gives the pronunciation, which is nice, and the one- and three-letter codes. Um, the amino acids can be put into different groups um, by looking at the characters of the side chains. So there are nine nonpolar amino acids that have nonpolar side chains. These are hydrophobic. This word hydrophobic, um, hydro pertaining to water, and phobic meaning afraid of. So something that's hydrophobic is not soluble in water, does not mix well with water, it's afraid of water, not attracted to water. So the nonpolar amino acids are, that side group is not attracted to water, and so they are generally found on the interior of proteins. Um, tryptophan is included in that list, but it's kind of a borderline member. It's kind of nonpolar, but it's kind of a little bit polar too. So here's the portion of that table showing the uh, nine nonpolar so here's glycine. The side group is just a hydrogen. Um, alanine, it's got a methyl group. Valine has an um, isopropyl group. Leucine, again, just hydrocarbons. Isoleucine. See, this leucine and isoleucine both have a four carbon side chain, it's just attached in a different way. It's just a structural isomer. Then there's proline, which makes a five-membered ring that includes the amino nitrogen. But you can see this is going to be nonpolar. Then there's phenylalanine, which has a, a, a benzene ring on it. Methionine has a sulfur group in it. So this is a, um, a thiol ether, but they're not very not very polar at all. And then there's tryptophan. So tryptophan, um, they said, is a, is a borderline member because it does have this NH3, sorry, this NH group here, which could engage in hydrogen bonding with something else. 
but generally they, they lump it in with the nonpolar amino acids. So I'm not going to make you memorize the structures of these. I would like you to be able to look at the side chain, though, and say what group the amino acid belongs in. So we look at the, the R group here, and we should be able to say, yeah, that's a nonpolar amino acid. Um, then there are polar amino acids. These are hydrophilic. Philic is the opposite of phobic. So hydrophilic means water-loving, hydrophilic, like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. These are found on the surfaces of proteins. Most, uh, most biological systems are aqueous, water-based. And so what happens is the polar amino acids are on the outside of the proteins where they're in contact with water, and the hydrophobic proteins uh, amino acids are on the inside where they're just next to each other. It's like they're hiding out. There are six polar neutral amino acids. So these polar amino acids are, are divided into three categories. There are neutral ones. The side chains are polar, but they're neutral. They're neither acidic nor basic. And so these are those guys. So this one's an alcohol. This is a thiol. This is serine and cysteine and threonine, another alcohol. What kind of a group is this? So this is an amide group. Here's glutamine. Glutamine and asparagine are very similar. This one's just got another CH2 group in here. This is also an amide. And then we have tyrosine, which is has a phenol group here. So all of these at neutral pH, meaning pH 7, are neither acidic nor basic, but they are polar. Then there are polar acidic and polar basic amino acids. So the acidic ones are going to have a second carboxyl group on the side chain, another carboxylic acid group. At physiological pH, that side chain is going to lose its acidic hydrogen and have a negative charge. Excuse me. There are three polar basic amino acids, and those have another amino group on the side chain. And these are going to accept a proton and have a positive charge. So here are the two that are acidic. They've got a um, carboxylic acid group here. So this acts as an acid, and this one also. And then the basic ones have another amine group. So that acts as a base and can accept a proton. And there's the amine, and here's the amine. Arginine, uh, lysine, histidine, glutamic acid, aspartic acid. Now, there's a big clue in the names of these two, huh? That those are the acidic amino acids. They're actually given a name that has acid in them. Oh, I meant to point out, so on this table, here's histidine. The three-letter abbreviation is what we're going to use mostly in this class. Um, generally, it's the first three letters of the word. Here's lysine, L-Y-S, arginine, A-R-G. They, they do each have a single letter abbreviation, which as far as I know we're not going to really use, but you should just be aware that it exists.